Hello, Chargers. Welcome back to our BC updates. Although I would much rather see you in person, this platform does allow us to share important updates and reminders while learning and working remotely. In future updates, we will again ask for your feedback for what you are most interested in hearing about. However, today we already have a great deal of information to share. So we wanted to start with addressing questions we've already received. I also recently established a new regular meeting with leaders from our faculty, staff, and students to discuss ongoing communication needs. And we are highlighting many of those conversations today. So let's get started. COVID, as the pandemic continues to impact the world around us, I appreciate our campus community continuing to rise to the challenge and do what is needed to keep each other safe. With our transition to online learning for the remainder of the semester, we also transitioned our work environment to reduce the amount of campus traffic in accordance with Governor Reynolds' recent recommendations. While numbers may be decreasing slightly, they are still high, and we believe the impact from the Thanksgiving holiday remains to be seen. Additionally, we know our hospitals are still at or near maximum capacity and need all the support we can continue to give. Pending possible guidance from the governor regarding the December 10 expiration date for current COVID recommendations, our current remote work agreements will remain in place as scheduled. We recommend that all employees and students continue to complete your charger health check, even when at home, and especially if you go to campus. We can help monitor any symptoms and provide the most up-to-date recommendations for you. Also, we do need to be informed should you get tested for COVID-19 or if you are quarantining. Please contact the Compass or Charger Health if you have any questions. I also want to urge you to please stay connected. Remote environments can cause some mental anxiety and feelings of isolation. We have a community ready to support you. So please reach out to your peers, connect with faculty, ask for assistance from whomever you need reach out to our counselor. We're here for you and we support you. We are beginning to see some good news with two vaccines in the approval and distribution process here in the United States. During Governor Reynolds' press conference last week, she shared Iowa is anticipating the first distribution of the vaccine to start December 13. Healthcare workers, and long-term care residents will be the first priority as they are within our most critical populations. Currently, they anticipate the vaccine to be available to any who want it by mid-2021. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Hang in there, we are making progress. This week, we are meeting with Briarcliff's Board of Trustees. We are excited to connect with these leaders. Traditionally, we host a town hall following these meetings, which falls during a busy week right before the holiday. So we will host our next virtual town hall after we return from break to share important updates and outcomes from the board meetings. Our athletic director, Nick Scandret, is unable to join us today, so I will be sharing his athletic updates. Congratulations to our women's soccer team for making history this year. For the first time in program history, they are champions of the Great Plains Athletic Conference regular season. A two to one victory over Morningside last Saturday at Faber Field secured the GPAC title for the Chargers as the team put together a 10-1-1 conference mark to finish three points above the Mustangs in the league table. The Chargers now look ahead to the spring season as the number one seed in the GPAC postseason tournament. The dates for those games are to be determined. Coach Cox has been offered a position at a D1 school, which was one of his professional goals. We are saddened to see him leave the cliff, but we know this is an exciting opportunity for him, and we wish him the very best in this next chapter. We are searching for a new head coach, and I'm confident we will find another great fit for Briarcliff. This is a great team, and we will again have wonderful leadership to help motivate continued success in the program. We also have had an abundance of interest in the head coach position for Charger football. Over 100 people have applied for this position so far. We are grateful for the interest in leading this team. We have so much potential and talent. 
We are working diligently to find the best fit for our student athletes and for Briarcliff. Once the head coach position is hired, they will lead the search for assistant coaches. We are optimistic about the future of this program and cannot wait to see what we accomplish in the future. Additionally, our search for the strength and conditioning coach is progressing. Last week, we had candidates on campus and we are in the process of finalizing our offer for this position. While we all miss Coach Herc, we have so many amazing coaches interested, interested in helping our student athletes. I know our athletes will once again have a strong physical performance leader in the near future. As we gear up for our in-town rival game with Morningside, we will have some extra fans in our bleachers this week, despite the reduced spectator policy. Over 30 flat chargers will be added to our gold seat section. These donors were not only passionate about further showing their support to our basketball players, but also to support the program through this generous gift. We are so excited to add them to the stands. Speaking of spectators, as a general reminder, we are currently at 25% occupancy for spectators in the Newman Flanagan Center. This is to further support mitigation efforts in response to the governor's recent proclamation. We are currently and continually evaluating and adjusting to the guidance we are provided, and we appreciate your ongoing support. All ticket sales are now online, and we offer free online streaming for all of our games. Please visit bcuchargers.com for more information. Some of you may have had a chance to see the baseball turf project currently happening at Bishop Mueller Field. We are inspired by the generosity of our baseball alumni and friends of the university for their extraordinary support of this project. Phase one includes demolition and installation of infield turf and is well underway. We are excited to have our baseball players take the field this spring. We have so many exciting things happening in Cliff Athletics and look forward to sharing more updates in the near future. Go Chargers. Now, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Todd Meeling, Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs. Todd? Thank you, Dr. Carstens, and hello, Chargers. I hope you're all adjusting well to the online learning format. Please, if you're experiencing any challenges or need any kind of assistance, reach out to the Compass or to your academic advisor. We're all here to help. To give you some updates um, on a few topics, one, block scheduling. This year, we've learned a lot together and we're still learning. Uh, block scheduling was implemented this fall to provide flexibility and classroom accommodations that we needed to keep you all as safe as possible. As a result of the scheduling and your collective diligence, our cases have remained very low on campus. We know, however, that some coursework this fall has been more difficult in that block schedule than was anticipated and because of that, faculty and department chairs in particular have been working diligently on making adjustments for the spring. For example, some departments made decisions to shift classes to longer week formats where they felt it might be the most beneficial in helping you all out as students. Advising. We've also learned a lot about advising. Some students were registered for too many courses in a single block. I appreciate all of you for your tenacity in working through that but we don't want to have you overstretch your schedule and become overstressed as a result. Our advisors now are all better prepared to properly guide your course load next semester and prevent that kind of overload in individual blocks. Speaking of next semester, when we return after break, we plan to continue in a mixed format with courses being taught in person, online, and as hybrids. Masks, physical distancing, hand washing and sanitizing and health safety checks will all continue to be required each day. We'll share more details as we get closer to returning. We're also very excited and in the midst of planning a winter welcome back festival to help uh, bring all of you back to campus that first week. Please stay tuned for more information. Our first year experience traditionally has come back one week ahead of everyone else um, in the spring semester. This year, however, our first year service learning experience will be completed during block D. The weather certainly will be more favorable. So for those of you who might do outdoor service, you're very welcome. Um, we also are hopeful that we'll be able to get into more local organizations to help out as a COVID vaccine is rolled out. 
regarding our scheduling for next academic year. Our faculty's policy committee has spent considerable time seeking feedback and also additional time in discussion to help produce recommendations for next year that will be presented to the faculty senate for additional discussion. That group will then come up with a final recommendation that will be presented to my office and that I will present to our leadership team for final evaluation and decision making. We're evaluating all successes and challenges from this year and our transition to block scheduling as part of this. Once those recommendations are all finalized, we will share that out with all of you when we have our official direction proposed for next year. Of course, this direction may be subject to evolve depending on advancements with the vaccine for COVID-19 or any other kind of developments. Back to you, Dr. Karstens. Thank you, Dr. Neely. Now, I would like to welcome Matt Thompson, Vice President of Enrollment Management. Matt? Hello, Chargers. Thank you, Dr. Karstens. We have been working on some exciting updates for you in the enrollment space. First, for our international students, I do want to address concern that I know our international students may be having about getting back into the United States after break. Currently, there are no changes as of today as, as there was for fall of 2020. Everything is the same regarding students' ability to get back into the US. So nothing has changed. We will, of course, provide any updates if things do change as we are constantly monitoring this ever-evolving situation. Now, I wanna talk about our tuition commitment. The Briarcliff Board of Trustees has approved new tuition measures, which will allow the university to implement low to no tuition increases, as well as new tuition commitment model. We understand 2020 has impacted many of our students, their families, and communities. The challenges of this year have motivated us to reimagine the tuition process. Like most colleges and universities, Briarcliff University annually evaluates tuition fees and the rate of inflation, often resulting in a tuition increase. The new tuition commitment includes the following. On-campus, full-time undergraduate students will have a new locked-in tuition rate. A slight increase, less than 2%, will occur for the 21-22 academic year. This rate will remain locked in for the students remaining time at Briar Cliff, subject to satisfactory academic progress. Graduate programs will receive low to no increases for the 21-22 academic year. Increases to certain programs will not exceed more than 2.5%. Tuition for Briar Cliff's online degree completion programs will decrease 10% overall. Programs experiencing an increase are the lowest increases we've had in the past 10 years. So please check your, your Briarcliff email for more information. Thank you, Matt. Now I would like to welcome Tina Stroud, Vice President of University Relations. Tina? We are so excited to soon unveil a new website for Briarcliff University. Our marketing team is working diligently on updating content and may be in touch with various departments on what might be needed to better connect with our current and future students. Soon, we will give you a sneak peek of what is to come, and I cannot wait for you to see this progress. It is modern, fast, and much more visually appealing. This is a big project and a big opportunity for the university. We are incredibly thankful to Title III and a private donor for bringing this project to life. We look forward to launching it in spring 2021. Stay tuned. We also remain committed to helping our students achieve their Briarcliff education through financial support. That commitment begins with our faculty, coaches, and staff. I have been humbled by the outpouring of generosity from our employees to help our students this semester. This generous spirit is just one of the many things I love about Briarcliff. Thank you to our faculty, coaches, and staff who have made a gift to our employee campaign, which benefits scholarships for our current students. If you have not had a chance to do so, please contact our offices for more information. Did you know that your holiday and everyday Amazon purchases could be supporting our students? That's right, the Amazon Smile Foundation will donate a half a percent of the purchase price from your eligible Amazon Smile purchases. So be sure to select Briarcliff University this holiday season and every day as you finish your um, online shopping. And now, finally, I wanna take a moment to travel down memory lane with our alumni who are watching. You and your memories are a part of our past 90 years. Remember Mass with Father Condon or Father Flanagan or how about Father Hughes? How about those Cliff Singer tours with Sister Arnold or road tripping to Kansas City to cheer on Coach Naki's basketball team? How many of you went on Honduras mission trips with Sister Janet or had a breakthrough in the lab with Dr. Weber? 
How about LA 101 or Mrs. Pesky and her influence on all of us? Oh yeah, and who could forget the honker parties? Our education, experiences, and friendships, and memories helped to shape each one of us. Last month, our alumni kicked off the Battle of the Decades Challenge, honoring our own experiences as BC students. The Decade Challenge encourages each of you to join your classmates in making a gift to student scholarships. Currently, the graduates of 1960 to 1969 are in the lead with their total participation, but they're followed closely by alums from the 1970s. And even our recent graduates have had a strong showing of support for our students. A little plug, come on 1990s grads, please join my husband and I in making a gift to support our students. This year, we are pleased to announce that any gift given by December 31st to annual scholarships will be matched dollar for dollar by a generous benefactor. That's right. So if you give $100, it becomes $200. So now is the time to make a gift. Your money stretches farther for students. Will you join us? Visit us online or contact me directly for more information. Together we are stronger and can make a significant difference for today's chargers. Back to you, Dr. Kirstens. Thank you, Tina. We are so excited about these advancement opportunities for Briarcliff. And now I invite Sister Pat Doty, Vice President for Mission and Leadership. Thank you, Dr. Karstens. Greetings to all of you this holy season. In Advent, we are called to patient waiting and joyful hope. This year is such a different experience of waiting. We have been called to wait in a pandemic which continues to affect all of us. Trusting in God's abundant, overflowing love for us, we wait, we wait for a vaccine. We wait in vigil with those who are infected, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones from this virus, as well as many other kinds of losses that come to us. Waiting and patience are foreign to us in today's world where almost everything is instantaneous. Yet that is exactly what God calls us to, to wait patiently in joy-filled hope. Many of you have been asking about the sisters in Dubuque. To let you know, the sisters in our mother house have been facing COVID cases, as our sisters in many mother houses and our elderly in long-term care facilities. In the past six weeks or so, we have lost several sisters from COVID-related illnesses. I'm happy to report today, though, that everyone right now is improving. But I ask you to continue to keep our sisters in prayer and know that they are praying for you, as always. And as we pray together, let us lift up all those who are suffering from COVID and other serious illnesses and for all our healthcare workers who are not only offering medical care, but are especially keeping vigil by the sides of all those who are dying without the comforting presence of their own families. And now as we anticipate, anticipate the celebration of Christmas, let us pray. Holy One, we lift up the needs of our students, their families, our employees, our alumni, and all those who love and support Briarcliff. We entrust their needs to your care, knowing that your arms have a wide and loving reach. God, you are the God of all those faithful people on whose shoulders we stand. We adore you because you have come to us in the past. You have spoken to us in the law of Israel you have challenged us in the words of the prophets. You have shown us in Jesus what you, O oh God, are really like. Gracious God, we adore you because you still come to us now. You come to us through other people and their love and concern for us. You come to us through men and women who need our help. You come to us as we worship you with your people. Hopeful God, we adore you because you will come to us at the end. You will be with us at the hour of our death and you still reign supreme when we fail as individuals and when all human institutions fail. You will still be God 
when our history has run its course. We welcome you, the God who comes in the incarnation, as we celebrate the fullness of your love for us this Christmas. Come to us now in the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Advent, Merry Christmas, and may you all have a safe, happy, and healthy New Year. Thank you, Sister Pat. Each of you, your families, and your loved ones continue to be in our prayers. We wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Be safe and God bless everyone.